let's go a little deeper into those energetic obstructions that so many of us have around success and money. Of course, we have to work with the limiting beliefs themselves, those money tropes that we already discussed. We also have to actively align ourselves with a healthy relationship with money, according to the eight laws of money, as we discussed. In this lesson, though, I just want to go over four techniques that we can use in addition to that awareness that will help us to shift out and remove any energetic obstacles we house within us that keep us from achieving high levels of success and making more money. These are things that we can be conscious to, meaning beliefs that we know we have that we ought to align to our divine nature. But many of these beliefs we, we can be unconscious to. In fact, I think most of these beliefs are so ancient inside of us that we don't even realize they're there. And yet they are. And they continue to contribute to that abundant ceiling. And so even though we're not conscious to them, we can still remove them from our field and from our experience using these techniques. Let's start with maybe the easiest technique, and that involves journaling. Whether you're journaling, journaling about what happened during your day or journaling about what you're grateful for, just writing stuff down helps you to stay connected to who you are and what you're doing in your life. But for the purposes of removing obstacles around concepts of self as they concern money, what I want you to do is to keep a journal for at least 21 days, wherein you write every day at the end of the day three things that are valuable about you or three ways in which you have added value to your life or to somebody else's life. Every single day, three things, again, that are valuable about you or ways that you added value in your experience or someone else's experience. The benefit of this journaling technique is that it demonstrates to you that you are valuable that you are an agent of shift and change in your own life and in other lives as well. The more we are reminded of our value and our power and our potency, the more we can embody it, the more we can occupy it and move within it. And by the end of those 21 days, again, 21 days is how long it takes to form a habit, by the end of those 21 days, we're going to feel valuable. And when we feel valuable, the fruit of that begins to show up on the screen of our life. We add value. We create value. We bring in value. But it starts with us. And unless we can connect with our own inherent value, we're not going to see it on that screen of life. So journaling will help us to do that. A simple technique, but powerful. The next technique I want to share with you is a combination technique that packs a punch, y'all. Now, this technique combines the law of attraction with Ho'oponopono. The law of attraction is, of course, the law, the principle that we are magnetic and that we attract essentially what we are. And what we are is comprised of how we think and how we feel. Ho'oponopono is the spiritual technique or principle practice of cutting cords and removing yourself from anything energetically that does not serve. This is based on a Hawaiian practice that works. Again, this particular technique combines LOA, law of attraction, with Ho'oponopono. And let me tell you how to do it. First and foremost, get into a relaxed state. Get into state, as it were. Get into that state akin to sleep, as Neville Goddard calls it, which is a trance or altered state. However long that takes for you, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15, maybe 20, get into that receiver position, as I like to call it. And when you are there, what you want to do is bring to mind that which you seek to manifest. Whatever it is you would like to manifest, envision this now. And as you envision this, we also want to feel this. Neville Goddard and Napoleon Hill, all the greats, Joseph Murphy, they all tell us how important it is to actually feel the energy of the wish fulfilled. The feeling of the wish fulfilled, married with the vision 
of that which you want to manifest is how you begin. And then when you've got both of these, you move on to the Ho'oponopono technique. Ho'oponopono is simple and it consists of four simple phrases. These phrases are, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, and thank you. I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, and thank you. Now, this is what happens when you add Ho'oponopono to your manifestation or your law of attraction. Any inner resistance you have to manifesting your vision, whether conscious or unconscious, will be present with the process of manifestation. By incorporating Ho'oponopono right into the manifestation process, you are actively severing and cutting cords with whatever doesn't serve that ultimate manifestation, you see. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me and thank you. You don't even have to consciously know what patterns you're breaking, what cords with people you're severing, people who may have implanted that belief into you in the first place. You may not be knowingly aware of any of this, but by offering the Ho'oponopono in a feeling way, along with the feeling of the wish fulfilled and the vision, you cut all the cords and the obstacles to what you're manifesting. Listen, don't sleep on this technique. Okay, the next technique I want to talk to you about is timeline clearing. Timeline clearing. Most of our unconscious beliefs were implanted into our experience by others, and usually in childhood, although some of these beliefs came about because of personal experiences, such as failures and traumas that took place. No matter who, no matter where, no matter when, you can go back in time through the imaginal chamber, meaning the chamber of your mind, your imagination, you can envision the memory of what happened that generated or created the false belief. You can envision that and literally time travel back into the experience. Now, before going back into the experience, you fill yourself up with light. And so here again, that meditative space is so important. Getting yourself into sats or the state akin to sleep, into that trance-like space and filling yourself up with source energy and light, and being in divine alignment. And then when you're there, imagining going back into the experience, and when back in the experience, imagining it happening a different way. Maybe the reason you have a false belief is because somebody told you way back in the day that money is the root of all evil. And you can remember who that was, and you can remember when that was. Well, you can time travel holding the lights back into the moment that that happened and you can imagine them saying something else to you. Money flows to you effortlessly. You are a magnet for money. Reimagine how that experience took place. It actually shifts and changes it in the timeline and in doing so opens up potentialities and new energy in the present, literally removing the belief that was generated 20 years ago removes it in your now experience. Now you can reimagine what took place or what happened that caused the false belief, or you can just go back as an envoy of light because the light knows how to do what the light knows how to do. Amen. And so if you can just hold that light, and go back to the moment of creation of the false belief. Hold that light and go back into the problematic, problematic conversation or experience that gave birth to this misalignment in you. And just dwell in the memory of that. Holding and expressing the light. Being the love and giving the love. And loving everybody involved and forgiving everybody in love. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Taking the Ho'oponopono with you and being the love, the light will also correct what happened in the timeline, bringing that into alignment and freeing up the energy in the present moment, removing the obstruction. Again, timeline work is real. 
time travel happens in the imaginal chamber. So try this technique and see how it works for you. The last technique I want to share with you is Neville Goddard's pruning shears of revision. And I kind of want to read it to you in Neville's words, if you don't mind. At the end of my day, I review the day. I don't judge it. I simply review it. That's occupying that observer position of neutrality. I look over the entire day, all the episodes, all the events, all the conversations, all the meetings. And then as I see it clearly in my mind's eye, I rewrite it. I rewrite it and make it conform to the ideal day I wish I had experienced. I take scene after scene and I rewrite it. I revise it. And having revised my day, then in my imagination, I relive that day, the revised day. And I do it over and over in my imagination until this seeming imagined state begins to take on to me the tones of reality. It seems that it's real, that I actually did experience it. And I have found, Neville says, from experience that these revised days, if really lived, will change my tomorrows. Can you smell what Neville is cooking here? <laughs> it's powerful and you could do this every single night. And my friends, it works. Before dropping off to sleep, we review our day, everything that's happened all the good and the bad, the experiences and conditions, the people that we meet when we're walking down the street. These are the people that we meet each day. Everything that has happened in the landscape of our day, we review it. And then anything that happened that does not conform to our divine concept of self or to that which we seek to create and manifest in our life to include money and business, Anything not in alignment with that, we revise it. Again, this is called the pruning shears of revision. We reimagine that the bad things that happened, happened in a good way. In fact, happened in a way that benefits us and serves us at the highest level. Maybe a painful conversation that you had. You reimagine it so that the words that were spoken to you were edifying and uplifting. You take the time to look at it all and revise it in your mind over and over and over again until it takes on the tones of reality. And what Neville means by this is we do this until it feels like we actually lived our revised day. Not the day that we had, but the day that we recreated in our imagination. And when it takes on the tones of reality, when it feels like we live the revised day, we will have created a whole new tomorrow in accordance with our divine concept of self and in accordance with that which we seek to manifest. Clean up your whole day, your whole experience in the imaginal chamber using the pruning shears of revision. This technique is good for business. It's good for money but it's good for everything in the life that's showing up on your screen of life. Revise it, rewrite it, reimagine it, and then relive it the next day. Let me just say, let me conclude by saying, any limited belief existing inside of you, any energetic obstruction that you're presently housing can easily and effortlessly be removed from you when you step into the divine nature and concept of self. When you step into alignment with heart, alignment with light. When you are in the light and in alignment with the light, the light will clear these lower patterns. And when you couple that with practices and awareness and techniques, this will clear everything that does not serve, creating an open, available channel for money, success, and more. <laughs>